What's happening guys, welcome back to another cash game review session. Been a while since we've done one of these, I know, and some of you have been missing them. But the editing takes a while for these, and these videos don't do as well as the highlights, so I haven't really had time to put them together, it's not been worth it. But as those who watch the stream will know, I've been away for a couple of weeks, so I don't have any highlights to edit, so here you go. So this is a review of Zissan, who we've actually reviewed before in the past, playing originally used to play 10 zoom, he's now moved up to 25 zoom. For those that don't know, we stream these every Monday on Twitter. Twitch. If you want your own session reviewed, there's a link to the Discord. Just shoot me a message in there. I'll let you know how to go about it. If you enjoy the content, guys, please make sure you subscribe. I've noticed over half of the people that watch these videos aren't subscribed, and I really want to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So all you got to do is click the little watermark in the bottom right corner and enjoy the video, boys and girls. I'll see you in the next one. So this is the second uh, of Zissan. So uh, I think, was it originally 10 zoom? Um, and now you've moved up, I assume. Or it might be the same stakes, whatever. Um, I think it was too aggressive and made some shit bluffs, at least theoretically. I don't really know what the 25 zoom pools are like. So I don't really know how that kind of strategy would, would do in these pools. Okay. Um, open queen 10 in the cutoff seems okay. Ace jack, we are three betting. The size is a little bit big. I don't really like the size. Um, I, I go seven or seven and a half to be fair, but he's not even playing a full stack, so it'll be a fun player. That generally means two things. One, we can go, he's, he's playing almost a full stack, but I think that fish will just, I don't know, they'll just play kind of like, they won't be asked about sizes anyway, they won't think about that, so we can probably just go a bit smaller and still get as many folds, to be honest, anyway, so anyway, with 3 bet ace jack ace king king amazing board for us, I'm probably going for range bets on this board, and I'm going very small, I'm probably actually going smaller than this because I want to keep a lot more hands in when we have ace jack, right, so like the smaller you bet, the, the more hands that villain theoretically has to defend with so the more we can get value from with our entire range, right? So like, yeah, it's a really good board for us. If we want to be polo, we can just bet, you know, bigger with certain hands and do a lot of checking back. But I'm just going to bet basically my entire range. So I'm going to go for probably quarter pot bets on this flop. As played, probably, I don't mind betting turn without a heart as well, because you'll still have all of the ace of hearts, like queen jack of hearts, jack ten of hearts, stuff like that. So I think there's enough merit betting for value. Timing tells can be a thing against fun players. The fact that he called so quickly, I would be less inclined to think he's got King X. Again, villain dependent. But I don't mind betting again on the turn or checking back, I think is fine. If he checks, we bet. If he bets, we call. Simple as. We're going to lose to Ace Queen here is the most likely hand we'll lose to, I think. And we beat the Queen Nine of Hearts, which is... The fact that he floats that on the flop, like, he's obviously a fun player, and this is why betting the turn is good. Like, if he has all of these ace-ex of hearts, queen-10... If he has hands like queen-nine of hearts, he'll have, like, jack-nine of hearts, nine-ten of hearts. There's all kinds of shit we can get called by, right? And we, we beat so infrequently on this board, just put more money in on the turn, to be honest. Gets yeah, a bit dicey triple-barreling a hand like this, but... So it's kind of a two-street hand anyway, so a lot of the time, if we check back the turn we might just get to call the river and it's a two street hand you know if we bat the turn we might have to check back the river but i just prefer batting just to get value on the turn uh, you know from hands like this thoughts on checking back turn letting him over bluff river yeah but i'd say generally it depends on opponent a lot of people don't bluff like i would say in these pools they probably bluff more than on say gg for example gg 100 and l pool fuck me um right queen eight suited mp i'm never opening this in the games that i play uh, GTO Wizard is opening this. I am not sure if Razor Reg will. No, it won't. It's kind of a zero EV hand um, in terms of GTO at least. Um, Razor Reg isn't opening it. I'm not opening it. It's going to depend on your pools and your players. So good, good things to have is obviously labels and notes as well as obviously using a HUD. Do you use a HUD, Zissan? But it's useful to know like how many good regs and stuff like that are behind and whether or not, like, you know, there's a high 3-bat from people behind and stuff like that. For example, if the button and, and cutoff likes a 3-bat a lot, then opening this is not going to be very profitable, right? So, like, you might use an RNG for something like this, but I would generally avoid using an RNG because there's probably going to be factors that can sway your decision to be profitable or not profitable. Like, if these three fucking 3-bat a shitload, right, then it's not going to be profitable because they're going to 3-bat and we just have to fold. So we want to be a little bit tighter. If, the, if all of these guys are playing 10% VPIP and 0% 3-bat, then fucking open Queen 8 off. 
Uh, so we're RNGing for Ace-10 there, which I think is probably going to be a mix. So, I mean, we can look at, for example, the Raise Your Edge ones, which I think just do it a bit more... Yeah, they, 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 a bit more pure. They, they kind of do these these um, ones, like the uh, a small frequency, which is mainly for board coverage, but it's never uh, three bet and ace ten off. Pretty sure it's going to be like zero EV here. It'll probably do it. I oh, know it does it pure, but zero point zero eight big blinds of EV, which is really not a lot. So I wouldn't be three betting ace ten here to be honest in the small blind. Um, I'd be three bet. I'm, I'm pure three bet and ace jack off plus, but not ace ten, but. This is a thing, like, I saw you roll for that and RNG for it, but, like, depending on what ranges you're using, obviously it's super low EV anyway, so it doesn't matter if you fold, but, like, if you're just RNGing for spots that you don't really know the frequencies, what it's supposed to be, you're not really falling into that strategy that you're learning, and so it doesn't really make sense to use an RNG. So, generally speaking, I'd say don't bother using an RNG for lower stakes. Next time we open, against fun player here, I'm just putting money in, yeah. Just just put money in against a fish. Now I'll put lots of money in. Don't mind. Uh, I'm probably betting pot and then shove in river. Yeah. I, I really like this. And I think the... I, I think the idea here... I can see that you've got the idea here. Like, when I see this flop, I'm like, okay, I've got top pair against the fish. I'm going to put money in. And I'm just thinking about the flop at the minute. I'm just like, I'm going to put money in the flops, you know, and just see what happens. Then I see this. I instantly look to the pot size and his stack, and I'll be like, how do I get it? Now, how do I get all of it? Then I'm trying to figure out what bet size I can have on the turn to be able to shove the river. And I would bet pot, knowing that I can overbet shove the river slightly um, uh, for slightly over pot. So I am a big, big fan of this. I don't even hate a slight overbet. I think this is perfect, though. I think this is absolutely perfect. And you'll see Fish call down with hands like Ace-5. You'll see him call with Ace-8. You'll see him fucking have some 10-jack of spades and shit. That, oh, no, we can't have 10-jack of spades. 10-jack of diamonds that don't want to fold. And the fact that it's not folded as well, he could have had a 5-6 of hearts. He could have had a, a jack-8 of hearts, something like that, that just is never going to call river regardless of size. So when you're against Fish and you've got good hands, you want to bet and you want to bet big. So, yeah, huge fan of the way you played that hand. Ace-5 suited. I'm just going to check fold on this board now against against a fish playing 22-bit. Also, just snap tag him as a fish, yeah. So if he runs up a stack, you're not going to know whether he's a reg or not. Check this, 666 six, six, big blinds. Uh, I would just snap fish tag this guy because he's got 23 big blinds. Like, tag him as a fish. I'm not trying to bluff anything here. I'm just like, okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm just trying to get to showdown. Now I'm going to bat and I'm going to bat big. He's going to have some 10x, but bat bigger, bat bigger. Again, like... Think about what kind of range you're targeting here. Like, if he's got, like, ace-9, he'll call a big bet. If he's got, like... If he's got nothing. If he's got, like, ace-jack, he's going to fold to basically any size. If he's got deuces, he's going to fold to any size. If he has something like sixes that's riveted a set, or if he has something like a nine or, you know, something like that, he's probably going to call two big blinds. He's probably going to call five or six big blinds. Just bet bigger here. He, I, just, I, I thought the ace-10 was perfect, and I thought you'd be doing this a lot against fish, but, like, you potentially just missed out on value. And he had jack eight off. But he's pro he's not going to check all the way to the river just to fold a pair of eights. And we don't need to worry about being balanced and shit because we've given him the fish tag and he's playing 23 big blinds. Like, the guy's a fucking child. Like, just bet big. I think I wanted him to go crazy. Well, you don't. Because if you bet small there and he goes all in, we're not happy about it because we've got the bottom end of a straight, dickhead. So we don't want him to go crazy. And listen, why do you think he's going to go crazy? The guy's playing 23 big blinds, so he's not a fucking adult, right? He's then also just checked the flop and checked the river. Do you think he's going to go absolutely batshit with nothing? You need to get out of this mindset of, like, people do it all the time when they check back strong hands and it's like, oh, so they can bluff the river. And it's like, guys, how many times do, do we fucking see people not bluff the river, right? When people take these passive lines, flatting pre-flop, checking flop, checking turn, they're not just going to go batshit for the sake of it when you bet small. Nonsense. You get a lot of hands, though. Kings with three bet, jack nine off, we open. Ooh, this is a, this is a nice sketchy flop. Ooh, the, ooh, these are nice, uh, nice flops to have decisions on. So I'm going to check this flop on the left, and I'm definitely going to check this flop on the right. Um, we get a pretty quick call. I don't mind just hammering it now, especially when we get a quick call. Quick calls, generally speaking, are weaker. Uh, easy call on the right-hand side. I like the half pot size on the left. And then I'm all in on the left. We unblock the top pairs. He's called pretty quick. He called ridiculously quick on the flop. 
Um, we block hands like King Queen of uh, Spades, King X of Spades, and King Queen of Diamonds. So like some of his like we block some of his like hands that we'd want him to bluff with, like King Queen. So I'm shoving this all fucking day. On the right hand side, I think generally just calling. We block Queen Jack. We block even Jack Ten suited and Pocket Nines. This sucks, but I think I like. Um, I think I like a call on the right. If you think that the the pool generally doesn't bluff enough or whatever, I'm okay folding. But I think once we check back flop, we're probably calling this a lot on the river. So call on the right, I like it. We be ace two off. Tag him as a whale. All in on the left, I like it. No snap is good, and he folds, which is whatever. Um, I don't hate checking the the river with the kings as well. I prefer it when we don't have the king of spades. Um, but you can still have some maybe like ace queens, some like ace x of spades that might want to bluff. But again, try and base it on your opponent. If you have any reads on your opponent, like if you think he's a blaster, then check. If you think he's a station, then shove. I want to have a look at this king's hand and GTO wizard just to see what it does because this is a pretty sketchy flop. So villain shouldn't really have jacks that often. He should even fall back tens at a frequency. But I think you'll find here or at least in the pools that I play, that most of your players are going to have 10s, jacks, and 7s at a full frequency here. So this board is a bit sketch, but we have those as well. So range versus range, we're doing really well on it, but just like kings isn't... I'm, I'm not like extremely horny about this hand kind of thing. It wouldn't surprise me if you do a lot of checking here. 40%. Okay, it's just better with kings. Uh, mix in between sizes. We're kind of split in range, but aces and kings mainly wants to bet. But again, if we look at the the range for button calling here, they don't have they don't have jacks or tens. They don't have jacks or tens theoretically, and they they only have sevens half the time. Um, here, but I think you'll find that they call a lot more. So if they don't have jacks and tens, then fucking, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, so against aggro regs, they're probably not going to have jacks, but they'll have tens at a, a pretty high uh, high frequency. What do you mean? Is kings ever jack? Oh, it actually has some shoves here. I'm not shoving. It's shoving a tiny bit, but I just don't mix in 350% shoves. There's just no point. If you're really fucking that bothered about getting it in, just bet three quarters and then jam turn. I, I don't really like the idea of jamming 350% pot. It's pretty random. Like... It'll do it with certain hands that can, like, have to get called by worse, but, like, it's a really weird fucking... Yeah, just... I, I don't know about this. I was mainly just seeing what he was doing on the flop. Like, I think this, in reality, is a much sketchier flop than... Um, than GTO Wizard thinks it is. Um, but once we bet small, we're just going to be surely just tripling this off. It might even have some shoves on turn, or, like, some bigger bets on turn. Whereas I like to set myself up for, like, a river shove, so... I'm betting half pot a lot. But this is having some all-ins for like 200% pot. It's having big bets mainly with kings. Um, but it leaves the SPR weird, so I don't mind doing this. Uh, villain calls with like half of range and then rivers at all brick. Yeah, king's pure shoving. Um, and then it's even jamming some king-queen suited. Aces, it's starting to check when... Eh, I guess... Combos are kind of irrelevant because we only have the ace of spades with this line. I guess we do a lot of checking with the ace of spades on the flop. And then shoving and villain calls half the time, falls half the time. So he's got to find some calls with, with top pairs. Apparently has aces at small frequency. Uh, some 10 nines calling, some pocket eights is calling. Yeah, apparently doesn't really have that many better hands like because he doesn't have tens or, uh, or jacks. I don't know if you're going to roll for this one. King nine suited. Um, I don't even know what to do here, to be honest with you. Uh, I figured it was figured it was close. It's never using it as a four bet bluff, which I thought it might do, but it doesn't. So honestly, I, I mean we're deeper here actually, so I don't mind calling because um, people tend to not blast as much. But I think this is fine. Suited aces definitely go up in value, so suited kings will have some more value as well. Uh, call and flop, and then honestly, I'm just folding turn. Theoretically, we probably don't want to fold turn because he should have like a lot of any clubs want to double here. And we block ace, king, and kings, which is uh, his most likely um, double. So I don't mind this. And then, yeah, shit river. And I'm just... I'm not bluffing this hand, I don't think. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, nice call and turn. I don't mind his line. I I'd tag this guy as, like... I I'd probably give him, like... I'd give him the agtag tag, just because 3 bet and 10-8 suited. Like, I mean, it's not a thing, so... Or, or, or like in GTO Wizard, it's not a thing because of the because of the size in like again 200 bigs deep. We could look at it, but I can't really be asked. It's not really worth it. But I'm not really a fan of his of his pre flop play anyway. People do this a lot against regs. Like fair enough if you think that players overfold, but like you know, 
I, w- I would assume that he's a rag. He's, he's played with you before. You, you, he knows you're a rag. Like, and if you're calling King Nine suited, you're definitely not overfolding pre flop. So like, there's plenty of fish in all pools. Like, why are you trying to dick swing and play ten high out of position in a three bet pot against somebody that knows what they're doing? Baffles me. Uh, Ace Jack here and King Jack. I don't mind a three bets. Um, I mean, I don't know if you, you've not rolled for this. I don't know if GTO was it. Does it pure? Yeah, again, 0.03 big blinds of EV. Uh, I'd prefer the three bet with H Jack off here, to be honest. Definitely check raising a flop on the left. Don't mind basically range betting small. This hand probably wants to check, but like I don't mind betting. Yeah, I like the check raise on the left. We have the nut jack. I think people will just kind of blindly bet half part here. Um, with this being better for us, I guess, in a way that I'm probably con uh, continuing on it a lot. If it's a card that's bad for our range, for example, an ace, I would be checking. You can have 4-6 suited, but like we do as well. It's technically better for us, this um, this card. On the left, we bet small. I assume turn goes check, check, and then river. I think either... I guess betting. I guess just betting big here. You're kind of playing your hand very face up in a way on the right as well. You're batting exactly the strength of your hand, which kind of makes sense, but I'm probably just going bigger here because he doesn't really have many better hands um, once he checks back the turn. Ace-King if he's a nit. Uh, he folds versus half part, he'll fold versus bigger bets, and I think bigger bets look more bluffy, where we can bluff hands like sevens. Um, this river... Check, check, sweet. If he'd have bet that river, we would have been in a spot, but he checks back with ace-jack as well. And this is a problem, man. Like, I'm raising Ace Jack there all day, but, like, so many times, like, you know, they just fucking... They'll check back their worst Jack X on the flop, and so many times they just end up having better hands, and I'm like, well, I'm supposed to raise for value, but I think people will... I think people generally will overfold two check raises, so... Yeah, I, I don't like block. It, it, I think it's just too thin. Think about what our value range is here on flop and turn. Like, our value range that wants to... Like, ignoring the river, value range that wants to check, raise, flop, bet the turn is going to be 7s, 5, 7-5 seven, five suited, jack-7 suited, ace-jack, 6-4 suited, um, and then jack-5 suited. Like, we are so low down in our value range. It's basically the worst hand that we can have. I'd much rather just value back my stronger hands and potentially block those as well and just i don't know at least give him some room like having the jack of spades means he can't have jack x of spades like jack nine of spades which always continues turn and we don't have the ace of spades so i think checking is probably better again villain dependent than betting now we're gonna see this hand's aggression here if he's still gonna be overly aggressive Okay, the ace-10 I much prefer as a four bet. okay we go for the call with jack eight suited i was wondering if you were gonna raise because, like, I, I don't hate a raise with a gut shot on the back door flush draw, but we're against under the gun on a board that's super bad for us. So I'd like to see what GTO Wizard does here. This is a small size, and I know you've done you've probably called because of the small size, but at the end of the day, going playing a 3-bet pot with ace-10 off sucks dick. So, like, I'm, I don't want to play a 3-bet pot with it. So I'm either going to play a 4-bet pot with it, or I'm going to just fold. So I'm probably going to fold. Yeah. I don't really like four betting against smaller sizes because there's less to steal, but I also really don't want to call, so. It's not about being a pussy. It's about actually utilizing self-control where you don't just want to blast everything because this board's really bad for us. Or even if it's not that bad for us, it's, be it's really good for under the gun is, is the way we'll put it. You're going to float and then blast on a fucking spade, aren't you? Yeah, now what? And, and, and then you get yourself into spots like this where you've got, like, ace-10. Like, you only beat bluffs, but it's like, fuck. Like, you did this to yourself, Zissan. You did this to yourself. Yeah, I like the squeeze here, even though it's just kind of nasty because you're going to get called in probably two spots and you need to hit. But, yeah, okay, just, just bat and get it in now. Ace-10, I'm probably folding. No Metallica aren't playing. Miss Sugar are playing. And yeah, and you just look at that. It's a 106 big blind pot that you just didn't need to be involved in, man. Like, river fold because fucking... What are you expecting to see here on the river? I don't think that you've really thought this hand through. I think you just think... I think this is entitlement tilt where you've just hit top pair on the river and you're like, well, I, f I called the turn. I'm not going to fold top pair, am I? But like, what are you realistically beating? Like, name some bluffs that he's going to have when he takes this line. So what are you expecting to see, Zissan, here, like, as a bluff? And be honest, because when you go, ah, oh, he's going to pocket sevens, like, no, he's not. Like, no, he's not. You don't beat anything. Like, you don't beat value, you don't beat bluffs. This is just, ah, oh, shit, I've, I've river top pair about a call. And so just don't get yourself into these fucking spots with hands like Ace 10, right?
Just honestly, fold Puri. That's the thing as well. Like, yeah, it's a reasonable candidate to fall back. And I know you're thinking, okay, well, we've got... We're getting a better price, so we're going to call. But at the end of the day, I don't... I don't I, I'm not talking about, like, you know, uh, in the moment. Like, because you're not thinking like that in the moment. That's the thing. I'm talking about now. What do you think he would take this line as, as a bluff, right? Like, what do you think he's going to have as bluffs? Like, what do you think he's going to have as value? The small size is often nutted as well. Especially when he checks the flop. Fuck me. I oh, know he didn't. He bet, he bet the flop. He bet the flop and the... He's just triple barreled this. I thought I thought it went fucking check, check on the flop. He's just triple barreled. You've called down with ace high and then hit a pair and then called. This is stationary, bro. Fold this pre. Don't get yourself into shit spots like this. Now, when you have ace queen of spades, yes, this hand sucks, right? But at least that, like, even if we do call down with ace queen of spades, first of all, we had a nut shot on the flop the same. Then we turn the nut flush draw. And then on the river, we've got the top, top pair, right? We lose to something like ace queen here. At least we theoretically uh, um, chop against ace queen. But it doesn't matter, like, oh, I block aces, I block ace king. You're always going to... It's a shit thing to say. Like, you're always going to block fucking top set or, like, top fucking pair when you've got top pair. It doesn't count as a blocker, really. Like, because you've got top pair. Obviously, you block combos of it. Anyway, that was shit, Zissan. That was really shit. So, just fold prey. Honestly, just fold prey with these kind of hands. Ace-10 suited, massively different. And then if we have ace, ten of spades, that uh, it sucks, but I'm probably folding river. Just, you're not really going to see. What do you mean, queens? Why is queens doing this, dickhead? Shut up. And again, seven, eight of spades could take this line. Yes, it could, but like, that's one hand. And secondly, fish probably don't three bet it that much. We don't have a hood on him. They're probably not picking that size. Probably not betting that flop. Yeah, they might bet turn, but they're probably going to bet bigger on that turn, by the way. And then you, you, you're you choosing very specific hands. Oh, you could have 8-9 of spades. Yeah, okay. Well, he's got 8-9 of spades. Even if he has that pure, that's one combo. He's also got ace-king, kings, jacks, fucking ace-jack, ace-queen. How many combos is that? It's like 40. King-jack suited here. I'm just going to bat. I think theoretically check... I actually... I actually don't know. I actually really don't know if I want check shove, check call, bat, big, bat small. Because shit like this happens and then it's like, well, now what do I do? I think we have so much fold equity on the flop, whereas when the turn bricks, I think we have less. I think, like, Nopa will call with, like, nines and eights now, whereas he should definitely fold the flop. All right, sweet. Just stick it in. Definitely not checking here. The guy's a fish. I don't give a shit about balance. So many hands are just going to check back here that we may as well just stick it in. Oh, we get snapped. What do you mean? Eight, five, you spanner. Tag him as a whale. Nice hand. Ah, uh, fours. Just, uh, I, I, I call on only a very high roll here. Like, if you're doing this all the time, you're probably just going to be burning money, especially because people are tighter as well. I don't know, man, because if they don't blast, maybe we get to realize a lot. But, like, in fact, this will defend pure, I'm pretty sure, because we're not supposed to open it very often. So this is under the gun where, look at that. Look at it. So when we get three back, we're just pure calling because we, 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 we have it so, I mean, basically pure calling. And we flop a set, ding, 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 fucking ding. What a life you live, Zissan. You were right. What was it you said before that you flop more sets than population? Well, if you're a lucky boy, then just keep peeling. Yeah, this is ten dollar, twenty five dollar. Yeah, yeah. So we, <laughs> I guess we want to develop a range around specifically pocket fours, but again, because this, because I don't want to have too many raises here, I'm probably just calling. Um, but again, in general, when you've got good hands, you mainly want to bat and raise. Bat small and shove river and then lose to aces is what's going to happen here. Okay, yeah, fine. Going smaller. That's good. Honestly, you'll get away with doing that. If you've got a set and you raise, it's fine. Now we put him in spots with hands like ace king with, a, with, a, with the king of hearts and ace queen and ace jack if he has those hands. And yeah, we're just shoving. Easy shove. He's going to have better sets sometimes. Which is dumb. He's going to fold sometimes, but... Generally speaking, if you raise your sets, like... I, I said this in a video a while ago. I said that if you check raise your sets from the big blind, always. It was specifically big blind when we, when we flat. But I was like, if you, if you check raise your sets 100%, you, you, won't, you won't go far wrong with it. You, even if we're supposed to call and stuff. This guy's just getting in, isn't he, boys? I actually kind of like four bet shoving here with weaker hands because you're going to fold a lot. And when fish cold call, they will see a flop so often. So if we make the, like, if this guy makes it like 24, he'll just call a lot. 
Uh, whereas like all in will force him out. So if you have like ace queen off here, shoving just literally prints money. I wouldn't mind a check raise with the five seven. I we've got a double got in a backdoor flush right. It's one of our best bluffs. I think check raising um with the five seven. Wait, if we open blind on blind then check call, fuck that. Well prefer a check raise here, buddy. This is where your aggression should be, I think. We've got a double gutter and a backdoor flush draw and, you know, and seven high. Stick some money in. We've got seven high. No, no, you've got seven high. If he's got queen jack here, you feel like a fucking knobhead. Do you feel like a knobhead, Zissan? Zissan? Hey, Zissan, do you feel like a knobhead? Because you should. Because 157 people have just watched you check seven high and seen villain check back with queen high. And win the pot. Don't you feel ridiculous now? All right, let's have a go. So we even open in 7-5 suited. We are indeed. Well, this is actually, yeah, yeah. So open him. Checking 80%, which is nice. Pretty reasonable. They're doing... They're, sorry. What do you mean overbet? The fuck are you overbetting for? What, what's it around? Oh, threes, fours, five do suited. Okay. He actually smacks this part. Because he has five do suited, fours, threes, pure. They never three bet and never fold prey. Ace four doesn't want to fold... Uh, doesn't want to think he prey either. Checking back ace... Mate, blind on blind is absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. You're telling me that GTO Wizard basically wants to pure check ace three suited? I guess it's kind of mainly going up. Mate, this is just weird. This is why, like, I, I never studied blind on blind because it's just fucking nonsense. First is small bats. I mean, this isn't having a lot of raising, but look at all. Look, look at what it's raising here. It's raising five percent. And look at look, look at look. If you can see here, the hand it's actually raising the most, with the exception of fours and threes, the hand it is raising the most out of any other hand is fucking five seven suited. With the backdoor flush draw. So fucking raise it. Anyway. Call turns absolute nonce. I mean, to be fair, like, it's kind of a nonsense spot. Because, like, you won't see people do this. Like, they're not going to... Look at the, look at the fucking turn range. They either bet 175% pot, 275% pot, or they check. That's not happening. Shut up. Anyway, when they check back and then the river comes an eight. We've got seven high. Look at that. Look at, look at how red that is. The purest of bets. Because we've got seven high. So when we've got seven high, <laughs> actually we have the tiniest bit of EV here because apparently we're ahead so occasionally that we can occasionally win, but not when we have um, the other combos of it. So we, we cannot win by checking, but we can win by betting. So yeah, bet your seven five. Bet your seven high, dickhead. Anyway, yeah, I didn't like it. And, and you'll see that as well. You'll see people, like, you know, just stab once and then they'll check back their, their stuff like that. So, like, there's so much we can get to fold, man. Like, 10 jack, like, stuff like that. Like, if you're ever in a spot where they can have basically nothing that checks back, but it beats you, then always bet. So, if, they, if like, when they have just jack 7, like, fucking jack 10, queen 5, queen 6, like, they're never going to call that hand. They're always folding. And even if, you're, even if you just bet small and you target that, I'm fine with it. So let's say you think, oh, he's never going to fold an ace. He's never going to fold a nine. That's fine. We don't have to bet like 2x part. Just target the, the bunch of nonsense that will fold to small bets if you like. I don't care. Just bet. You've got seven high. You've got seven high. All right, six high. Let's bet. And then let's fucking smash the river. I don't mind over betting this river. If you, if you check here, I'm okay with it because he will have a lot of pairs that want to that wants a call, right? This is, it would be a child check, but it wouldn't be as childish as that 7-5 suited. So I'd much prefer you betting the 7-5 than here because you can target a lot more. But this is a hand I'm always betting because we unblock spades as well. So he has hands like 10-jack, queen-jack, king-queen of spades that are all probably going to fold the river. I'm probably betting big because I'm balancing and my strong hands want to bet big, right? If you bet really small here just trying to target those spades, I wouldn't hate it because I think you're going to bet part or over bet and you're going to get called a lot. By like tens, jack stuff like that. But at the end of the day, when we have ace x here, pocket eights, pocket threes, pocket fours, we probably want to overbet. Do you know what? If you two x pot this or two and a half x pot, I actually really like it. I'd actually prefer two and a half x pot than anything else. And then do that when you have like ace jack, pocket threes, pocket fours, pocket eights. Yeah, snap fold. When you bluff out of position on the river, do you just small bet or overbet? Depends on the spot. For example, I specifically look at what I'm trying to target. That that seven five suited. 
before blind on blind you know i might just try and target the queen highs the the stuff like that he's never going to fold an a so i don't mind betting small on that board basically the way you should consider it is you've got to consider what you're actually representing for value and how you want to balance that with your bluffs for example on this river here when we bet turn and bet river what's our value it's going to be asex right we're probably not betting like seven eight for value so it's going to be asex it's going to be full houses right so what do those hands want to do? Bet big. So what do our bluffs want to do? We want to balance. We want to bet big. On the other board with the 7-5 suited, right? What can we have for value? We can we can bet for value as low as like fucking pocket kings here, right? And we want to bet small with those hands, right? So a lot of our value wants to bet small, so our bluffs can bet small. Uh, pocket nines, fuck knows what has gone on here. We flatted like a dickhead. I don't really know what to say about this because, like, I kind of don't really want to three bet when people make it this big because we're just going to make the pot massive and they're just going to, like, have a strongish range a lot. So I'm not actually that concerned about getting four bet because it's, like, whatever. But, like, I'm concerned that we're just going to make it, like, 17 bigs and he's going to call. So, like, I don't hate calling. And, yeah, I like the chat right here. It needs protection. This guy's just a, a rusty gate. So we might as well just... Well, we don't want to do that, do we? <laughs> Yeah, something like this. This is this is this is very reasonable. Um, I mean, now you've got to kind of simmer down because he's gonna have better hand. Like, what are you doing this for, man? Like, are you betting for Val? <laughs> you might you might as well stick it in. No. Ugh, I, I don't know. Yeah, like, I was going to say, like, he, he could just have fucking flopped a boat, like, when he bats that tiny size, like, <sighs> I, I think just checking the turn, man, like, I don't know, this is, this is a bit shit. The, the main reason you want to raise the flop is, like, for protection, to knock out this guy with his overcards, and then potentially go against a weaker range. The thing is, like, he might fold his fours, five, sixes, and his ten jacks here, like, I, I think just checking. River's kind of mad because he's a fish. We're getting a ridiculous price, so the river, I can understand the call, but this whole hand is kind of a bit shit. And this is kind of the problem, by the way, as well, of calling hands like nines out of position. Um, because then we've got boards like this, and we have no idea what, what to do. So I, I don't really know what to say about that. It wasn't good, but I don't know where you went wrong exactly. But it was wrong. <laughs> like... It was shit, but I can't exactly pinpoint where it was shit. It was just shit. Sanjak Thuted. Raise in BVB. I think just raise or folding blind versus blind is probably the standard. You can play your hand or your range here. Like, range wants to bat a lot, but this will... In fact, I'll probably have big bats and checks, and this will probably want to check, so I don't mind just checking this down. Check call and turn, and then check call in basically every river. Not every river, but I'm check calling a lot of rivers. Ah, oh, why? I think it's actually a really bad river. Does he do this with like... Like, what is going to bluff here is the question. I think just folding because like... When you look at this board, you need to figure out two cards he can have that doesn't hit this um, range. Now, nah, fuck, fuck shove in here. Because like people, people that are gonna overbet an eight probably aren't gonna fold an eight. They're probably not gonna do this and then and then fold an eight. So like, I really don't like shoving. I think just folding. I think this is like if you shove here, it's just like, oh, I've got a blocker. Like, so I shroom the river play a hand today where him and some other guy just fucking did the blocker thing where they just like shroom shoved aces with the ace of diamonds on a river with the nut blocker and got called by worse because the guy obviously leveled himself into calling with a fucking blocker and it's just like don't just be like oh well i'm all in because i've got a blocker because it's like you need to consider what they're representing first and what kind of range they're going to have for doing things get snapped yeah get fucked and, th and, and this is another thing as well guys when people bet big jesus christ how many times do you see people 2x pot bluff probably not that often in these pools fuck me snapped off jack eight Anyway, look, the 13 big blinds, six big blinds you've had in the middle and you're like, I'm going to protect my six big blinds by putting in another fucking 94. What do you mean balancing being aggro? How often do you have Queen Jack here as well? Never. Never do you have Queen Jack with this line. Just don't do this. Just actually just don't do this. You don't need to. And people over bet, man. They're repping. Do you know what? You can call. You can call. 
What? Why? What are you? What are you trying to achieve with this overbat, Zisan? What are you trying to? What are you trying to achieve with this overbat? What do you mean? Don't be a dick. What a weird thing to say to Weasel of all people. Don't be a dick. Stokes, don't be Scottish. What are you trying to do here, Zisan? What is your intention of this bat? Like, what are you trying to do with this bat? Like, what are you trying to 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 fold out? I think I was like, it's going to look so strong. But like, what is your intention of the bat? What are you trying to get to fold? If you are bluffing, what are you targeting? Won't tell you because I don't agree with that jam. Okay. Well, when somebody overbats, they are extremely polar, right? So what polar means in poker is what they're going to have either an extremely strong hand or an extremely weak hand. When they have an extremely strong hand, they're going to have a straight. By going all in, you are trying to get a straight to fold. Don't try and get straights to fold. A set doesn't do that. A set doesn't do this on a 4 to a straight board. I'll tell you that now. A set isn't going to do this. What sets does he even have? You need to all consider the action that takes place as well. You can't just make up fucking hands that he's going to have. We 3x pre, he flats. The flop goes check, check. He doesn't have sixes. He doesn't have tens. He doesn't have kings. And he shouldn't have nines. So maybe he's got sevens, which is extremely unlikely because he's probably not going to bet big on the turn with sevens. He's probably not over betting the river with sevens. So our hand becomes almost a reasonable bluff catcher because we block some straights. We block queen jack and jack eight. So if we are, if he is super polar, then we could potentially, like if you called this, I'd be like, no, I don't like it, but whatever. But shoving is just the worst thing. Because first of all, not only are people under under bluffing, 25 zoom under bluffing, so this one, so clear jam. Do you actually think this is a good all in? You think that because the pool under bluffs, you should go all in when somebody over bets on a four card, four to a straight board? Have you actually heard yourself? Have, have you heard what you're saying? You're saying the pool under bluffs, so when somebody 2x pots, you're going to go all in with a pair of 10s. Oh, you fucking... I thought you were serious. I thought you were trying to say that, like, because they're under, because nobody, because the, the, the pool is under bluffing, that you are trying to to bluff, to to over bluff. You fucking cretin, man. This is this is one of those things. This is like what Range Jam does because it is just like, uh, or, or like what what Shroom does in, in the spots where it's just like, well, I I, I don't want to fold. Like, I, I've got a blocker. I'm gonna go all in, and it's like, guys, you're not playing fucking two K and L. You're not playing fucking against Linus Love, right? You're playing against fucking just dribblers for, for the most part. Stop trying to do shit like this. It makes me sad because at the end of the day, this part, right? Let's ignore calling, right? Calling, I think, wouldn't be the worst thing because he's so polar. You'd have to find a random ace five. You'd have to find a... It's kind of hard for him to have bluffs. Maybe a four five of, of hearts, a, a three four of hearts, something like that. So, I, But let, let's ignore calling, right? Let's say that we're never calling and we're just going to fold or shove. The six big blinds that you should have lost, and instead you've lost a hundred, man. You've lost a hundred big blinds for no reason, for absolutely no reason. Somebody's like, somebody's told you, they're telling you with their betting, oh, I'm super polar, I've either got a straight or I've got fucking nothing, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm all in. And it's it makes me sad. It makes me sad seeing this. Same with range jam, and so many times I'm just like, you've just lost a buy and you didn't need to lose. You can't afford to do this when you're playing cash game poker in 2022, because people, you will lose. You understand? I'm losing. Like, you will literally just lose. You can't lose buy-ins willy-nilly because it's hard to make the money back because poker is so fucking difficult these days. You can't be doing shit like this. Whatever. Jack Nine Suit. Well, this is just fucking clicking buttons, isn't it? Versus another gun. Button. Jack Nine Suited. Zero. Yeah. All right. Come on, get four bet. Yeah, I got the bin, dickhead. You get, you get binned a lot, Zissan. Stop doing things like that. Like, even just the, the close things. Like, the thing is, like, 10-jack suited, I'm not even through betting. I'm just flying because I want to see a flop with it. And so is GTO Wizard. Like, it's <laughs> barely three. Look, look at it. It's flat and jacks. And you're like, yeah, jack eight. Yeah, jack nine. Yeah, go on then.